In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. And for an expert insight on COPD, we've got a specialist on lung diseases as our guest in the studio today, Dr. Thorsten Bauer. Thank you very much for joining us. Dr. Bauer, you've treated many, many patients with COPD. What exactly happens there in the lungs? Well, the underlying mechanism that finally destroys the lung is an inflammation. We all know infection of the lung, like in pneumonia, as a severe event. With a COPD, we have low inflammation without bacteria in, in the initial state that destroys the lung. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you know, an inflammation, it sounds harmless, but yeah. the problem is that once it starts, it can't really get stopped. Is that the case? Yeah, when, when we want to have an example and you scratch your skin, you get an inflammation there, you get a red scratch. And when you stop scratching, no problem, it heals. But in the lung, the scratching doesn't stop, if, especially if the patient continues to smoke. Mm -hmm. Okay, you mentioned smoking. Why is COPD so much on the rise worldwide? Is that due to smoking? Well, the first most important reasons for a COPD are smoking, smoking and smoking. So we have to look at smoking in the first part. And if example, in third or second world, world, world countries that uh, do have developed more money, they buy more cigarettes. So when you look at smoking. But you also have to look at air pollution, for example, in big, large cities. And you have in the third world to look at patients who cook, for example, in closed rooms. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a question of one of our viewers. Many of our viewers have written to us on that topic. And we had our Hall from New Zealand writing in. He's never smoked and still has been diagnosed with COPD. So that could be a reason for his... Well, I don't think in New Zealand uh, air pollution and house cooking is a problem. But, for example, an unknown or untreated asthma, for example, with allergies, can lead to COPD too. Mm -hmm. Okay, but smoking is the most common cause, yes. you said. Um, is it only really strong smokers that get COPD? Well, there's actually no dose-response relationship towards it. Many patients smoke and they will never develop COPD. And that's what the patients report always to us. They have an uncle who smokes many cigarettes and never got COPD. But there are also patients who never smoked get COPD and those who smoked five get COPD. Mm -hmm. Okay, but strong smokers are more likely, I guess. Yes. Yes, okay. All right, um, is COPD especially prevalent in a certain part of the world or is it more prevalent with men or women? Well, it goes with the prevalence of smoking, one definitely have to, has to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it can only be treated if it's caught really early. What are sort of typical warning signs that especially smokers then should be aware of? Well, persistent cough is one of the most important signs combined with dyspnea. So it would help if the patient monitors his dyspnea like going upstairs in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so cough, breathlessness. Yes. And then what should you do? Are there checkups you should be getting as a smoker? Yeah, there's a very reliable checkup that's a lung function test that can be done with any physician who has this instrument. Uh, and how does it work? What, what do you need to ask for? Well, we, we try to test the lung function and you, you need to, uh, it's a pulmonary function test. We have a little instrument for that and you have to blow into this instrument to measure le lung function. Okay, so you, as a smoker, maybe that's an idea uh, if you can't stop smoking, which you should get that test done regularly. Yeah, it doesn't mm -hmm. hurt. Dr. Bauer, treating the lungs with hot steam or inserting a valve, how promising are these methods from your experience? Well, we saw two very promising patients there, and I have to say from my experience, there are other patients who don't really profit from that. It's a, it's a method for stage four patients, so for the very sick patients, and it needs a good selection to help those. Mm -hmm. You mentioned stage four. You classify COPD uh, into four stages. Yeah. Um, how do you treat uh, normally or how do you treat most patients in these different stages? Well, we have very trivial instruments. We treat the COPD where it happens in the lung and we have those meter dose inhalers. So it's actually a steam you can inhale and that will not heal the lung, but it will help 
you to get better. And there are two drugs, basically. There's this corticosteroids and one drug to make the lung white so you can breathe easily. Okay, so it's medication, corticosteroids, is something that will trigger fears of side effects. Yeah. How severe are the side effects with those forms of corticosteroids? Well, most people do are very afraid of corticosteroids and that doesn't help the pulmonologist. So what we put into the drugs that go into the lung is only a tiny part of what you actually need to swallow when you get really sick with COPD. So the amount of medication that you take through that inhaler is very small, is that what you're saying? It's almost nothing compared to what you get when you need to be hospitalized for COPD. For example, when we have the first shots of uh, corticosteroids in the hospital, we put into the patient on one day what he usually has in one year. Okay, so it would be much better to actually take the inhaler oh, yeah. because you have a smaller dose. Uh, but if that, in, that method works well with the inhaler? Well, it works Perfectly, but the patients don't comply usually to what we say. Only 30% of the patients do have the compliance that they do exactly what we actually prescribe them. Okay, so here's your chance to tell everybody <laughs> little side effects, little dose, take the inhaler basically, yes, right? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, one typical symptom of COPD uh, are these attacks of acute mm -hmm. breathlessness. What do you, that's very scary, of course, what do you recommend your, your patients to do when that is approaching? We call them exercise. It's, it's not really an attack. The patients know when these exacerbations come, they get more breathlessness. So what we recommend is to go to the doctor early, then you're out early again out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. Go and see a doctor straight yes, away, please. basically. Okay, um, what else can a patient do to improve their condition? What about exercise, for example? Well, exercising is perfect because, first of all, you know what your lungs can do for you because when if you're sitting around or go to the refrigerator, you will never experience breathlessness. But walking around a lake, for example, will tell you that you're breathless and then you do something for you. Mm -hmm. The other thing is vaccination is very important in COPD and we recommend vaccination against influenza and pneumococci. Okay, so that might help uh, your chances of not catching it in the first place or when you have it? No, when you have it because it avoids the, the additional infection of the lung with okay. these two microorganisms. All right, so there is a lot that can be done, but still the main message is don't smoke yes. because it might happen. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for taking thank the you. time. Thanks for being our guest today.